Yeah, I mean, I can be the first one, why not? So, about uh, the quantum brain hypothesis, let's put it this way. Yeah, and regarding its critique, what do you think about it now? Because the, the theory or, or the postulate has a few years. You're so, referring to books I wrote some while back, yeah. for example, The Emperor's New Mind and the Shadows of the Mind. Well, there, I mean, they have interesting things have happened. And I should explain what, what the book was about, I suppose, because um, not everybody will know. But uh, <clears throat> it's really, it's, the origin is not to do with quantum mechanics, although that. Uh, it had to do with whether there is something going on in the brain to do with conscious experience or conscious activity which is not computationally controlled. See, it's a current view which is very popular these days since electronic computers have become so powerful and, and so impressive in what they do uh, that that's what we do when we think. And that the brain is basically a, a, an electronic computer in biological form. Um, I've tried to argue that there is something else going on in conscious activity. Maybe a lot of the activity in the brain is of the nature of a computation, and that may be the way to understand it. But uh, conscious understanding, I claim, is something which cannot be explained computationally. And the original reason for thinking this has to do with the famous theorem of Gödel, which tells you in a not in the form he originally presented it, but more in the form that Turing later on encoded it, is if you have a system of rules of proof, suppose you have a class of, of theorems that you're interested in proving, and these can be just things about number theory. They can be things about numbers like Fermat's last theorem or such things of that nature. And uh, one might have a set of rules, which if you follow these rules, uh, <coughs> Without, if you follow them consistently, obeying the rules, then the conclusion will always be something you believe. That is to say, it will constitute a proof. Uh, and then what Gödel shows, or Gödel and Turing, is if these rules have a computational character, if you could put them on a computer, then you can always construct a statement which, if you believe that the rules only prove true results, this statement you can two, say two things about it. One is it's true, and the other is that you cannot obtain it by means of the rules. And that, that is, I should say, not subject to argument. It's, it's, that's clearly established. See, what people often 
think Gödel's theorem says is that there are things which are unprovable in mathematics. It doesn't do that. It tells you, it shows you how to construct a statement that is not provable by the means that you have laid down if you trust those rules that you have laid down. So it's sim simply explaining that our understanding of what's true in mathematics is not derivable simply by rules. Because if these rules are things which you believe and trust, it shows how you can go beyond the rules and find things which you must also believe by virtue of your trust in the rules. Now that's a bit complicated, <laughs> but to me it's telling you that the way we believe truths in mathematics is not following rules. It's because you, it's your understanding of the rules and your understanding of what the rules mean which tell you whether you believe the results. And so what does that mean? What's understanding? Well, it's not computation, I'm saying. And it's certainly the way we use computers these days. You say, well, you use a computer to calculate things and work things out. But how do you know that the, to trust the conclusion that comes out if it's, say, proving something in mathematics? Well, you have to know that these rules that it's using are things that you trust, that you believe are true to it originally. And that is not something that it questions, it's just following the rules. It doesn't have the understanding that you put in. I don't really want to go into that in detail. And there's a lot of argument, and many people attack this point of view, uh, usually because they didn't understand what I was saying, which I suppose is my fault, but I'm not sure. Because I tried all over again in Shadows of the Mind. The original thing was Emperor's, The Emperor's New Mind. And then I wrote this other book called Shadows of the Mind. And in that book, I tried to address all the questions which I thought were misunderstandings. And I made a whole list of these things. And still people complained and still didn't seem to understand what I was saying. So I, I was a bit of a loss there, so I stopped writing books like that. <laughs> but, uh, but I don't think the point is contradicted. The point is that, you, that the quality of understanding is something which is not rule controlled. It, I don't know what understanding is, but I do know that the normal use of the word understanding involves at least an awareness of what you're talking about. I mean, it wouldn't be reasonable to say that you understand something without being aware of it. So it seems to me that consciousness is necessarily involved in what you mean by understanding. So the thing, to me, is not a result of computation, is our awareness. So it's a bit of a mystery anyway what awareness is, and whether awareness is something that can come about through complicated calculations, which of course is the point of view which I expressed at the beginning, or is awareness something else? Is it something physical? You see, I think it is something physical, but if it's something physical, can it be something which is part of current physics? Now, you see, current physics is very computational, and, and people can do remarkable things with, say, in astrophysics. You can work out what the systems, how they will behave, and you can see that they, you, they do behave in this way very closely. But these are following laws, which are maybe Newtonian laws, or maybe using electromagnetic equations, Maxwell's equations. Uh, they're using laws that you can put on a computer. Now there is a question here, can you really put them on a computer? Because these laws depend on continuous parameters, whereas when you put them on a computer, you're using discrete approximations to those things. Now does that matter? Well, I don't think it does. I think that's not the point. It might be, so there's a question that one might consider there. But I don't think it's the point. I think that it's something else which is going on in physics, which we don't understand in terms of current laws. Because current laws, even quantum mechanics, quantum mechanics, you're evolving the Schrodinger equation or something, which can be very difficult to do. And you've got many, many, many parameters. But it's still a compu computational procedure. And so all these things, according to current physics, with the uh, question that I raised a minute ago about continuous variables and can you trust your approximations, that is a question which is not a trivial question, maybe has to be considered seriously. But I don't think that, my personal view is that that's not where the problem lies. To my view, it's a gap in, in current physics which is being taken advantage of by the brain. Now this is a sort of very outlandish and outrageous thing to say because I'm saying not only 
is the physics going on there, you know, very subtle and sophisticated, but it's something which is beyond the physics that we understand today. Now, I'm not saying it's something outside physics. I think a lot of people have a problem with this. They say, if I'm saying it's not part of current physics, am I saying it's something outside physics? No, I'm not. I'm saying it's outside of the physics that we know today. Now, if it, there is a gap in the physics we know today, where is it? Now, you see, the usual view is there is not no, there isn't a gap, you see. We've got these beautiful theories. We've got okay, Newtonian mechanics works pretty well. In the places where it doesn't work, you've got relativity, special relativity, or general relativity. 